Guys, guys, this, this can't be real. Is today even real? Oh my freaking goodness. This was an absolute baller of an event. We have so much to talk about, way more than we thought. There were a lot of leaks that were really, really accurate. There were a decent number of leaks that were like kind of close, but not quite right. And some things that were just total curveballs. We had so many curveballs. So to make all of this more manageable, I'm gonna break down my coverage into two parts. So the first part is gonna be talking about everything that's new and specifically the stuff that Apple didn't talk about at the event because once the Apple Store went up, there was a lot that Apple didn't mention at all. And so that's what I wanna spend a good amount of time in this video doing. And then the second video is going to be breaking down the configuration options because there are a lot, way more than anyone had expected. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So first of all, if you guys are as excited as I am about these new MacBook Pros and you can't wait to see all of the coverage, make sure you're subscribed because on Tuesday, October 26th, that's launch day for these MacBook Pros and you better believe there will be some video content here on the channel. It's gonna be wall to wall. There is so much to talk about. This is the biggest day for the MacBook Pro, in my opinion, in over 10 years. I mean, th this is absolutely monumental and, and we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about it. But the first thing that I wanna get into is kind of taking a peek behind the curtain uh, into what Apple released today. Now, let's start by talking about the design. So obviously the new MacBook Pro is a radical departure from the outgoing one. There was a couple of last minute rumors that ended up being true here. For example, we have a notch on the top. That's a controversial issue. People are pretty divided. Some people don't really care. Some people thought that it was, you know, the end of the world. I'm curious, now that you've actually seen the devices, what do you think? Is the notch good or bad? Let me know in the comments below. As far as the rest of the design, I've seen a couple of people that don't quite like it, and some people do. Some people say it looks kind of like the old unibody MacBook Pros. I can see that a little bit in the fact that it's a little bit more squared off and it doesn't taper on as gradual a slope, but I do think it's worth pointing out that the new MacBooks are not thicker than the old ones. So this is the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro. The new 14-inch is 0.01 of a centimeter thinner. So it's, it's the same, essentially, and it weighs a very similar amount. Like, they're, they're gonna be very similar in terms of their actual footprint. So uh, it looks chunky because of the squared off sides, but I don't think they're actually gonna be that chunky. Another last minute rumor that ended up being true was the all black keyboard. So it looks like Apple anodized the keyboard deck. That's an interesting choice. I'm still a little bit on the fence about it. I'm not sure if I like it. I think I need to see it in person. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Again, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about the black keyboard. So while there were definitely a few curveballs with the design, a lot of it was pretty accurately predicted over the past couple of months. For example, the concept images that I came up with with concept artist Ian Zelbo back in May, I think those actually are pretty close. And I wanna say, I was actually spot on with my layout for the ports. I tweeted about that a couple days ago. Nailed it. Anyway, enough horn tootin'. The big thing that I'm really excited for with this new MacBook Pro display, notch or no notch, is we're getting some significant updates finally. We get not only mini LED, but yes, 120 hertz ProMotion adaptive refresh rate. This is quite honestly one of my favorite new features on these MacBook Pros. I'm super excited for the processors, which we'll talk about in just a minute, but these displays look freaking awesome. I'm, I, I'm a fan of the M1 iPad Pro display. People have complained about the halo effect. I don't think it'll be as bad on a Mac where I feel like there's less just completely black backgrounds like you would have on iPad OS and iOS, which is where those things showed up. Um, but obviously we're gonna have to wait to see. The big one for me is gonna be ProMotion. I think that's what I'm most excited for. It's something that I've been wanting for four years now since ProMotion first came to the iPad, and now we're finally getting it. Now, let's start to talk 
about these chips because that is the main event. That is what we are all here for. And by golly, no one got it right. How, how many different versions of this chip there are. German has been reporting accurately since April that there would be a 10 core CPU. However, he missed the fact that there's also an eight core CPU on the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. Nobody saw that coming. We also didn't see coming that there would in fact be more than just 16 and 32 core GPU options. Probably as a result of the binning process, Apple was able to offer a lot more variations than we had expected. There's a 14 core GPU as well as a 24 core GPU. So none of that was leaked or even mentioned in the event. It's very strange, but there are in fact four different GPUs that you can choose from. And my goodness, does this chip seem like it's gonna be powerful. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention that it's called M1 Pro and M1 Max. Wow, that was another last minute curveball that people didn't really expect. We had kind of assumed M1X for a really, really long time. Everyone had assumed that. What we've ended up with are a huge variety of chips from anywhere from eight to 10 CPU cores, 14 to 32 GPU cores, 16 to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, as you would expect, this wouldn't be a Mac event without some vague and unlabeled graphs touting the performance figures of the new Apple Silicon processors. But this time we do have a little bit of information to go off here. So for one, the CPU performance versus power graphs where they compared the M1 Pro and the M1 Max to a very vaguely claimed eight core PC laptop chip. And they're claiming that they have 1.7 times the performance at 30 watts of power consumption, as well as 70% less power to achieve the same performance. Now that doesn't really tell us how much more powerful the chip is, but what it does give us is a little bit of a peek behind the curtain because in the lower right hand corner, of those graphs, you can see the eight core PC laptop performance data from testing is an MSI GP66 Leopard 11UG-018. That particular laptop has a Core i7-11800H. So that is presumably the eight core PC laptop chip that we are being benchmarked against. And that is pretty impressive to be using so much less power, but also be able to outperform the chip Although granted, we don't know what benchmarks these are in. I, I do believe Apple in this case, you know, people made fun of them with the M1. They were like, oh, well, how are we supposed to take your word for it? And then the M1 ended up absolutely demolishing the competition. So yeah, I think these things are going to be very, very hefty. But where things start to get like broken is with the GPU. So we know that there's a 16 core and a 32 core GPU option. And Apple compared these to some other graphics chips out there. And, and this, is, this is what I'm most excited about because this stuff looks crazy. They're claiming that M1 Pro is seven times the performance of a laptop integrated graphics on a PC and that it can match discrete PC laptop graphics while using 70% less power. And that is interesting because again, we can see that the PC laptop they're comparing it against is a Lenovo Legion 5. Now that particular laptop has an Nvidia RTX 3050 Ti. So Apple is claiming that they can offer RTX 30 series graphics performance while using 70% less power. That is a really, really bold claim. You know, it's been expected for a while now that Apple can embarrass Intel, right? That is not a secret. But now that they're able to take on AMD in high performance CPUs and Nvidia in graphics, that is absolutely wild. Now moving even further up, cause that's remember the 16 core GPU against presumably a 3050 Ti, again, in a benchmark that we don't exactly know what it is. But if we now compare the M1 Max, which has 32 GPU cores, they are comparing this thing to the quote, high-end PC laptop graphics. And we can see that that data is from an MSI GE76 Raider. Now folks, that laptop, has an RTX 3080. And Apple is claiming, that, notice they're not claiming that they can beat it in terms of performance, but they're saying they can get really close 
with 100 watts less power consumption. The 30 series has already been so unbelievably powerful for what it is. And now Apple's coming out here and saying, oh yeah, we, we can match that and we can consume less power while we do it. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna take these graphs completely at face value. There needs to be a lot of comparison. And obviously, these are not gaming laptops, right? Like, you're buying a 3080 laptop probably not to use Final Cut on it, right? Because you can't. But so, so while they're not necessarily directly comparable, that is a lot of performance. And my goodness, are these things going to be monsters? Now, the other thing that Apple didn't talk about at all was the way that these things are structured in terms of pricing and upgrades. So with the M1 devices, there have been very few options. Essentially, your only choices are the storage and the RAM. So you could go for 256, 512, one terabyte or two terabytes of storage, and then either 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. Well, with these new processors, we have a lot more options to choose from. So many, in fact, that I think it's worth going into an entire dedicated video on Apple's page just to talk about all of these differences because there's a lot more than you would think. I think it would have been nice for Apple to at least mention the fact that you don't get the 10 core CPU across the board. Another thing that they talked about but that wouldn't necessarily stand out to you is that the new fast charging capability isn't as available on the base model. It comes with a 67 watt USB-C power adapter for $2,000, whereas the higher spec models come with a 96 watt power adapter. But I think when you look at the cheapest version of the new MacBook Pro, $2,000, right? That is a significant price increase from 1799, which is where the old 13 inch was. But for that, you are getting an eight core CPU, which I'm sure will be very powerful, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, the Liquid Retina XDR display, you're getting some ports back, you're getting support for multiple displays, you're getting no more touch bar, a new design, and 17 hours of battery life. And yes, I said 17 hours of battery life. There is actually another thing that Apple didn't mention, and that is that the new MacBook Pro is rated for less battery life than the M1 that we already have. This guy's rated for 20. The new chip, because it's got a lot more horsepower in it, you know, there's it, basically the same size laptop with more power in it, so it doesn't get quite as good battery life, hence the fast charger that you can option to put in it. So that is an overview of a lot of the stuff that Apple didn't really talk about with these new MacBook Pros. I was kind of surprised at how many surprises there were when the store went live. So let me know what was the most interesting thing that Apple didn't talk about in the comments below. And of course, make sure you're subscribed because very soon I'm gonna have another video diving super in depth into these configurations and talking about where the value lies, what upgrades are worth it, what, uh, what, what's worth buying for certain use cases and that sort of thing. So definitely get subscribed. Follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. This is a really exciting time. I will see you guys very, very soon and many, many times over the next several weeks. So, oh boy, this is a big one. Take care.